Imagine going and dropping $400 on a motherboard, you get a virus on it, and it destroys the motherboard, you can't replace the hard drive because it'll just reinfect the hard drive, and your hardboard's worthless, and you have to buy a brand new board. That's exactly what can happen with this new virus. This is a pretty important topic that needs to be covered. I'm seeing it get downplayed by a lot of people that work in the IT world, and I think this is something that needs to be covered, especially for home users because I don't know that a lot of home users will fully understand how important this is until home users really know the ramifications of what can happen if you get infected by this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to the security researchers over at Binarly for catching this stuff and figuring out how all of it works. And there's also a good site here i will drop a link to everything down below so that way you have it and if you want to know what you need to do to protect yourself against it, you can skip ahead a lot of timestamps. if you want to know what's going on so you have a better idea of how this stuff works i will go ahead and get started on explaining that this here will explain the different vendors that are affected basically just about every single motherboard manufacturer out there right now is affected by this stuff so we are going to go ahead and get right into it so this new attack method is called logo fail and it's a firmware attack. Now I covered a firmware attack back uh, a few months ago with the Black Lotus Eufy malware. Now this is much worse than Black Lotus because with Black Lotus, it infected the EFI boot drive, which is a hidden volume. You can see here where I put this in a command prompt, which is where I showed people how to boot it and showed them what they needed to do to be able to find out if their files were infected with the Black Lotus malware. This stuff is way worse because it actually takes over your BIOS. This is a big issue because typically BIOS viruses would be really hard to be able to write because you'd have to customize it for each BIOS, figure out an infection, way to infect computers. But this is actually much easier in the grand scheme of things being able to infect other people's computers. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Also, just so you know what a boot logo is, let me go ahead and show you. So any of your motherboards so if you get something, and this isn't exclusive to ASUS, I'm not picking on ASUS, this is like everyone out there pretty much has one. So you might, so like MSI or ASRock or whoever else is making motherboards. There's a ton of motherboard manufacturers. This is a custom boot image right here. So you've got one for like Tough Gaming, Public of Gamers, ROG. That is a boot image. That's what we're talking about here or rather a, a logo. So it's the logo that shows up as your computer is booting up. So this is a really good article that goes into quite a bit of depth. Ars Technica did a really good write-up. And then like I said, I'll also drop links to Binarly's articles because they were the company that did the uh, research into this and found out what it is, uh, how this stuff works, and they go over how they found it, but it's also covered here in this article. Now this affects everyone and this also affects both Windows and Linux because this affects the boot image. Now Mac cannot be infected by this because Mac does not allow the boot image to go and be overwritten because they really have their uh, machines really locked down pretty well. Now there's a few different UEFI suppliers. There's the AMI inside in Phoenix, but like I said, it affects pretty much all the motherboards out there because they make the UEFI stuff for like Asus, Acer, MSI, ASRock, all those different brands. So chances are you very likely have a motherboard that is affected by this issue. Now what it comes down to is image parsing in UEFI. So basically what that is, is that allows the manufacturers to go and put in their own custom boot logo, which is what I was just showing you. Now there's something here that I wanna point out. It says there are major benefits to this, or it says depending on how the UEFI is configured, a simple copy paste command executed by either the malicious image or the physical access. This is what we're gonna be focusing on here because unless it's a corporate environment or government environment, you, I don't think people really need to worry about the physical access for home users. This is what you need to worry about right here, being executed by the malicious uh, image. So this can happen from a few different ways, but as it goes into detail here, it says that it can happen by like through fileless malware. So this is a pretty basic diagram, but it kind of shows you what it is that's going on here. And it has a Black Lotus for comparison. So like I said, Black Lotus only takes over the EFI files, whereas this actually more or less takes over the BIOS. It's not like taking over the BIOS firmware itself, but because the image loads with the BIOS, it means that even if you were to scrub Windows, let's say you get infected with this virus, you go and scrub your hard drive of this stuff and you go to reinstall, you will still have an infected system 
because it's the BIOS that's being infected. It's that logo file that's executing malicious code. And so like I said at the beginning of the video, that's what I mean when I say if you get infected with this stuff on your hard drive or on your motherboard, basically your motherboard's trash, or at least that's as far as what we can tell so far. One thing I'm gonna point out here, it sounds like Dell, or at least a lot of Dell devices are not affected by this because they don't allow the image files to uh, basically be replaced. They're protected by the Intel boot guard. Now I have seen, so they mentioned it on their website, and I've seen this mentioned on a few other articles, and I don't know what's true and what's not. It's probably because this is so new and some, some wires are getting crossed somewhere that some people are saying that Intel boot guard can protect you against this if you turn it on. Others are saying that it bypasses Intel boot guard and uh, AMD's platform security. And then the other thing that I wanna point out here is it says these attacks can work by exploiting a vulnerability in a browser, media player, or other app and using administrative control gains to replace the legitimate logo image processed early in the boot process with an identical looking one that exploits the flaw with the image parser. And then also talks about how it can be done if there's physical access. So basically what this is saying right here is that out of date browsers, out of date operating systems. So I know there's a subset of people out there that turn off security updates for Windows because there's this whole conspiracy theory of Windows is you or Microsoft uses these security updates to push more telemetry and all this other nonsense. It's just this massive conspiracy stuff that I hear people talking about. And then people are also running these odd browsers that don't get updated like at least for every month. And like you can also go look at there was a recent thing, the WebP vulnerability. Like people also really got butt hurt. I for the people that have the uh, show the dislikes extension for YouTube. You'll probably notice that was that had like a 75% or 25% dislike, 75% likes. That actually made a lot of people butt hurt, probably because their favorite said something about their favorite browser that made them butt hurt. But one of the critiques that I made about some of the browsers in there is that they don't get updated enough. And I can tell you from working in IT, the reason that I say updates are so important is because of zero day shit that will allow an attacker to get access to a person's system. And it's things like not updating Windows or not having an updated browser or having other updated software that's an issue. Even things like graphics drivers are not immune to this. You could go look at articles about things like AMD and NVIDIA graphics card drivers where even they are exploitable to be able to run malware. And that's why they get patched quite a bit. And you can go look at past change logs that show that as well. Now, there's something I'm gonna mention here. So there's no, right now they said there's no indication that these vulnerabilities are being exploited in the wild, but there's really no way to know because these are really hard to spot using traditional tools and methods. It says one clue of compromise, however, can be provided by examining the image file that's parsed during boot up. If the hash is different from what the device manufacturer's image file is, then that's a sign that you might have some problems. So there's a couple of, so now I'm gonna go into the mitigation, how it is that you can deal with this stuff. So there's a few things I'm gonna mention. So first of all, it says there's no active, uh, it says there's no indication of this stuff being exploited right now. I would imagine within a couple of months at most, we'll probably start seeing, because this is a, a pretty big deal, like this would allow persistence where you cannot delete this stuff and people will go and think that they can wipe windows to get rid of it. I can guarantee you there's a lot of malicious actors out there right now that are already preparing and trying to figure out how they can exploit this stuff. So people need to get ahead of this and be prepared for uh, these issues. Now, one of the things they talked about was examining the image file. And I saw, I think it might've been in a different article talking about examining the image file or the boot logo inside of the EFI drive. Now, I might've missed it because I checked on my computer because I wanted to show people an example for the video, but I went through my EFI drive and maybe I missed something, but I checked high and low and I could not find, this was just me showing it from a previous video that I made about Black Lotus. I could not find an image file. And so maybe, these articles are referencing the wrong thing as to where you actually find this boot logo. But even if the boot logo gets infected, it's gonna be damn near impossible to even determine whether or not your system is infected because this is basically fileless malware. And because it's run at such a low level, once it replaces that logo, then it's using the logo to run malicious commands. So you could go watch the fileless malware video that I made, I think it was a couple months back. It's pretty nasty stuff and you certainly wouldn't wanna have that on your computer. And so 
one of the things that people need to be looking for to be able to mitigate this stuff, because this was just reported to motherboard manufacturers or was disclosed, I think just a week or two ago, they mentioned it at the end of the article. You should start seeing some updates being rolled out for your motherboards here sometime. I would guess probably in the next month or two, because to be frank with people and the people that work in IT know exactly what I'm talking about here. For mo the vast majority of companies, security is an afterthought. So I really don't see these updates being rolled out super fast, but you should see some updates being rolled out over the coming months for your motherboard model. Hopefully you need, you'll need to make sure you're going and checking but you should see a note in here talking about how there's uh, security fixes. And it, like I said, it should be within another month or two. So you'll need to go and do that to be able to uh, patch that up. Now, the other thing, so I'd also mentioned Dell devices. So Dell, even though they don't have an issue with the logo, they still do have parser vulnerabilities. There was, a, a, I think, 12 different vulnerabilities that got uh, discovered. They mentioned it here in their article. Dell has vulnerabilities with the image parser, so they are not invulnerable to this stuff that a Dell device could still be infected with this. Now, the other thing, and it's not discussed here, I'm guessing that we will end up seeing at some point here when we start seeing this malware coming out here, is whether or not you could reflash your BIOS, take a clean computer with a clean USB drive and reflash the BIOS on your motherboard. Would the malicious logo survive? Would it have some sort of protection method where it doesn't get overwritten? Or would you be able to flash the BIOS and save your motherboard if you get infected by this stuff? I would just say it's safe to assume that if you get this on your motherboard, your hardware is probably trash and you could format your hard drive, but you'd have to figure out a way to be able to do that from a clean computer and not get a clean computer infected. So there's a whole issue there. But the thing is, if you do get infected with this, you could be looking at a loss of at least a few hundred dollars to buy new hardware, depending on however much it is that you paid for your motherboard. Also, let's go over a few other protection methods uh, that I want to tell people about real quick. So the first thing is encrypted DNS, which is some of the services, not all of them. Some of them do use filter lists. I talked about this in a video from uh, earlier this year that I would recommend going and watching it as a breakdown of why uh, you should be using DNS filtering. It's a very easy way to stop malware. Like I gave Quad9 as an example where like if you use Quad9, for example, they have malware filtering. DNS Zero has it. They're free services. You don't have to pay for them. Or you could go with something and customize your own block list and create an account. And I think they cost a few bucks a month if you wanted to go with something like Next DNS or Control D or whatever the other providers are out there. But having that filtering is definitely a solid plus. You also should be running an ad blocker. The only one that I recommend is uBlock Origin because this is important. I talked about this in the malvertising video, how you can, how there can be something called a pixel or a one by one GIF, which is a malicious ad that gets ran in the background. You never see it and it can execute uh, fileless malware on your system or run some malware of some sort, which, in theory, it could be used to run this type of malware and infect your computer. So you should absolutely be running a ad blocker. You need to make sure that you're keeping your antivirus suite or Windows Defender, whatever it is that you use, you need to make sure you're keeping that up to date. If you're on Linux, I guess you could use Clam AV, but Linux works a little bit different. If you're on Linux, these two are really important and also your updates. I know it says it can work past Secure Boot, but you should still use it anyway because it's good for protection against root kits and boot kits. You need to make sure you're keeping your system, your browsers, all that stuff up to date. And the other thing I'm gonna mention is you need to be really careful about, I've mentioned this multiple times in the past, be really careful about using things like file repositories. I've always said that what you should do is just go to the official source to download a file. So like if you have an Nvidia card and you need gra the latest graphics drivers, go to Nvidia's website to download it. Don't go to one of these file repositories. And this extends to, I guess you could probably consider a repository, some people like to sail the high seas. I think that's, there's plenty of people out there that get their stuff infected like that because they don't even know what the hell they're doing. Anything where you're downloading an odd file from a place that's suspicious or that you don't know is a big risk. And I suspect that some of these people are gonna be taking advantage of this stuff and spreading around malicious files that will execute on a person's computer. They'll think they're downloading like a legitimate file from a repository somewhere and it actually has this malware inside of it. And like I said, if you get this on your motherboard, I think it's safe to assume that your motherboard is probably 
ruined at that point and you're going to have to spend several hundred bucks on a new hard drive, new hard drives and a new motherboard to uh, really be sure that you're not infected by this stuff. So I would think in probably no more than a couple of months from now, we're probably going to start seeing this malware out in the wild. So I think it's a good time for people to start uh, getting stuff locked down and also keep an eye out for your motherboard BIOS update. As soon as you see the security update come out, it might be a good idea to go ahead and get that flashed. Also, just make sure you back up all of your stuff before you do that. And if you don't know what you're doing, consult with a professional. That's my disclaimer. Anyway, it's going to wrap the video up. Hope this was informative. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I will do my best to make sure they get answered, and I will see you in the next video.